Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going through the scrolling motions in Vim and the what Vim classifies under as um, various motions. Motions that really, I guess, couldn't put in another category. So we're going to start with those various motions. The first one being uh, the percent sign. So just before we start, um, Whenever I go in these parentheses or brackets, you'll see the one I'm on is the one that's highlighted white, and the one that I'm not on is highlighted red. So when I do this, I'm on the, the white one here. So the first motion is the percent sign, which just takes you to the, the, the closing pair of whatever parentheses or brackets you're on. So if I just keep, if I press it again, I go back to the opening parentheses, I go to the closing parentheses. You can just keep doing that to go to the next one. I can also, if I'm within, if I'm inside the parentheses, it will jump to the nearest. Well, it'll go to the beginning. Okay, so um, I guess yeah, it goes to the beginning one. Let me come here and see. Okay, it always goes to the beginning one. Uh, for some reason, I thought it went to the closest one to it. So I'm currently here where it's highlighted highlighted white, and I can do that to go in between them. It works for parentheses and it also works for square brackets. Just goes to the next, uh, the next, uh, I guess, counterpart. And then also, uh, in, I've got some C code here. So if we just come here, I can do this to do in between braces. And then it also has a special use case for uh, C uh, if else if statements, well, if else if directives so if i press percent it just goes to the next to the else or the else if or the end if and then it it can cycle in between them okay so that's the uh, that's the percent sign done i'm going to come back to the python code here next we have uh h h for high it puts your cursor at the top of the screen so i'm currently here at the, at the top of the screen uh, and then we have L for low, which puts your cursor at the bottom of the screen. And note it puts your, oh, oh my bad, I'm just going to move down a bit. If I do L, it puts my cursor at the bottom of the screen. And note it puts it on the first non-blank character of the line that you, that you go to. So even if I, even if I move a bit in the middle here, and if I do H, it will put me on the first non-blank of, uh, the top line. So H for high, L for low, and then M for middle. Basically the same thing. So you can just um, obviously comfortably scroll uh, within a within the screen. And then the next one we have is um, a bit of a weird one. Not many people will have much of a use for this. So if you do go, well, you need to give it a uh, a number argument. So if I do say three go, it moves me to uh, the third byte in the file. So whatever number you give before, it moves you to that numbered byte in in the file. So if I do one hundred go, it puts me on the one hundredth byte of the file. This is a, spe a specific use case. Unless you're someone that for some reason is editing a file and you need to check the bytes. Well, this this only came in useful for me in a, in a few uh, my programming assignments but otherwise a, a niche use case okay next we have the control e and control y so if i do just uh, let me just go to the middle of the document so if i come to this line the define epoch statement over here if i do control e it scrolls the window down, in effect, moving the, the moving the line that I'm on to the top, moving it up, right? And if I just keep doing this, the window keeps scrolling down, okay? And we can do uh, the opposite of that. So we were doing Control E, Control Y does it in the opposite direction, scrolling the window up. In effect, moving the, the line that I'm on down. Okay. Um, 
these can also take a numbered argument. So if I do control Y down, I can do five control Y to move it, uh, well, not down, up, but you know what I mean. The current line that I'm on moves down, but the, the document is scrolling up. Okay. Uh, the same with uh, control E. The window is, is scrolling down, but my line is going up. I can do five control, second, five control E. I think I did too much there. Uh, okay, now I'm lost. If I do five control E, there we go. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, scroll, scrolling the window up and down. Next, we have one that almost everyone knows, control D which moves you half a screen down. So if I go to the top of the document, um, we can see that I have, I think, yeah, 26 lines on the screen at the current moment. So if I do control D, it should put me on um, uh, line 14, line 13, or line 14. So that moves, uh, that moved me half a screen down. If you can see, it put me on line 14 over here when I did control D. Oh, oh that was, you know what I mean. Control up goes up, and then control down goes down half a page. So these go down, up and down half a page. Okay. Yeah, forgive my my bad math and relative numbers. Uh, so those move you half a window down and half a window up. Control F and B do the same thing, but uh, make you move an entire page. Uh, forward or backwards. So control F is for forward. So it'll move me to roughly, you know, line 25 because there were 26, 25, yeah, 26 lines in the, that can fit in one, in one screen. So control F will move me that amount of lines, uh, forward and then control B, um, backwards similarly. So you'll notice that control B, if I keep spamming it, it won't actually move my line to the top, whereas this control up or control U for up does actually move my my cursor all the way to the all the way to the, the top. So I think with control F, if I just spam it, okay that one moves me all the way to the bottom uh, if it can. Uh, but yeah, control B will will stop eventually. So yeah, all of these take down. So control F, you can three control F to move three whole screens down. Uh, all of those take counts. Next, we have uh, what are considered, uh, I guess, redraws. That's what it's uh, put under in the, the Vim docs. So if I do the ZT, so I'm on the define epoch line. I hope you can see it, this line. ZT. It puts my line, it, it redraws the screen such that the line that I'm on is at the top. Same with ZB, but now my line is at the bottom. So it puts my line at the bottom. ZT for the line at the top, ZB for the line at the bottom, and then ZZ to put the line in the middle of the screen. I tend to use ZZ the most. I prefer all my, I prefer the text that I'm editing or reading to be in the middle of the screen. So the, the mappings I gave you just now were actually the aliases of the actual mappings, but I find these a lot easier to remember. So for ZT, right, instead of ZT, you can do Z enter to put it at the top, or instead of uh, ZZ, you can do Z period to put it in the middle, and instead of ZB, you can do Z hyphen to put it at the bottom. So. Choose whichever you want, they both work. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Next we have, so I just need to demonstrate something now. Before we go into the, uh, one of the last uh, mappings here. Uh, so if you, by default, Vim has the wrap option on, which will automatic, automatically wrap your lines if they're too long. So I'm on line 28 here, yeah, but you can see it's a very long line. So it's, it's wrapped all the way, but uh, you can do set no wrap to disable the wrapping so that uh, now you have to, okay, I'm trying to scroll without being too smart here. 
So now uh, to see the rest of the line, you actually have to keep going, you know, across the line and it just, it won't wrap. So now you're horizontally uh, moving across the screen. Okay. Uh, these next few mappings require that you have uh, wrapping turned off. They only work with wrapping turned off. Uh, the horizontal, the horizontal scrolling uh, mappings. So first we have ZL, which scrolls the screen uh, from right to left. Uh, so ZL by one character, ZL, ZL, ZL. It will try to keep your cursor on like where you left it. So on this first LR, yeah, ZL. But when you reach the end of the screen, it will obviously move your cursor with the screen. Uh, this can take in a number of arguments as well. So I'm on R of reacted on this reacted word. So if you do four ZL, it will move me four characters. It will move the screen four characters to the left. Okay, L for left. And then ZH does the same thing, but in the opposite opposite direction. So ZH, ZH, ZH. You can even give it a number of arguments. So like let's say ten ZH, and you know another twenty ZH, so that we get the whole thing back. So now we are going to. I'm going to put this on the first thing in the line, we have the uppercase variants for ZL and ZH, and these move the screen uh, halfway across the screen. So for Z, uppercase L, it would move the screen halfway, half the screen to the left. So we're going to say this, the halfway point is roughly, you know, by predictable, yeah? So if I do Z, uh, uppercase uh, L, we should, our cursor should land on one of the characters of predictable. So Z, Shift, L, and yeah, it moved half the screen uh, to the to the left. And now we are on the able of predictable. Uh, so let me just do this. So you can see we are, we, we, we shifted the screen halfway, half, yeah, halfway to the left. Sorry if I'm, Sounding a bit off, I'm a bit tired at the moment. So next we also have, so Z, uppercase L, halfway to the left. And then Z, uppercase H, does the same thing, but shifts the screen from left to right. Z, H. Oh yeah, so while well, the screen is fully shifted now, so Z, H won't actually move me anywhere, just the screen is, can't shift anymore to to the right. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.